Hi guys, welcome back to Joe's RC Corner and uh, today I just wanted to uh, start off this video with a uh, thank you to a great comment from uh, Jerry Gervais. Um, he mentioned that uh, I've been doing a lot of time-lapse videos recently and uh, that you're not really learning anything from it and I, uh, I definitely can appreciate that. Uh, I've actually, it's my fault, I've been a little bit in uh, a rush to try to get this plane done. I want to start working on uh, practicing for IMAC competitions with this airplane. Um, and uh, so I've been kind of f speeding through a lot of it and uh, at, at the expense of you guys. Uh, so I really want to apologize for that. Uh, this video is also in a time lapse and uh, I do apologize for that. But we this is only wing one out of two. So on the next portion of it, while I'm building the wing, uh, the, the left wing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer and uh, I'm going to go through some steps uh, that I'm doing and uh, that way you guys can see a little bit more of why and how I'm doing certain things. So uh, again, Jerry, thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. I really do like comments like this because it helps me uh, do better for you guys uh, because after all, I'm doing these videos for you. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, with that, I'm going to play the time lapse of the right wing and then we're going to stop, um, and, uh, do the left wing and we'll bring that camera in closer for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. So thank you again. I appreciate it. And, uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and start building that wing. Okay, guys. So I figured I'd do a time the uh, during this time lapse. I'll go ahead and do like a voiceover for you guys. So I uh, just wanted to do some sand in there on the uh, on the wing before we start working on the uh, sheet. And so got some of the parts cut out, ready to go. And uh, also went ahead and got the hardwood mounts uh, for the um, for the wing mounting. So I got some five minute epoxy mixed up and uh, went ahead and mounted those points uh, that's where the bolts are going to go through to hold the wing onto the fuselage so we need that hardwood mount there uh, it's glued to the spar to make it a lot stronger and the trailing edge one is really just to keep the uh, the trailing edge on so here i'm working on a hardwood mount for the aileron now originally they had it um, on one side of that rib i went ahead and moved it to the other because it, it lined up better with the servo arm so that's why i did that so I cut a hole through the aileron uh, rib and epoxied that in place as well with the hole. So at this point, I'm I'm working on a paper tube so that way I can lead, put the aileron lead all the way down through the wing and uh, get to the servo bay without any problems uh, getting caught up on the ribs. Uh, so that's just a piece of paper uh, with uh, some CA to stiffen it a little bit. I'm working on the... Uh, uh, getting the uh, trailing edge sheeting uh, on the aircraft there. I'm using those big batteries as weights and I just used uh, some medium CA uh, to do this. Uh, didn't really give you a lot of time, but it uh, moves on really quick. And same thing with the leading edge sheeting as well. Now, if you saw, there's these uh, jigs on the trailing edge. Uh, that keeps the wing in the position that it needs to be flat and level to make sure that the wing is straight uh, when you're done on the table. Um, went ahead and did the center um, sheet in there. Um, still the same thing, just did the sheet in with some medium CA and some thin CA, sanded it to smooth, and uh, went ahead and added a little more thin CA to get some of that uh, in place. Now, there are also cap strips on some of those ribs. Uh, and that just helps with the cover and make sure everything goes over nice and smooth. Uh, then the wingtip uh, sheet in right there, same same deal. Now I used the plane uh, to go ahead and uh, start working on getting the leading edge shaped roughly. Um, takes a lot of material off really fast, so you got to be careful with that, but uh, works really good. Then I uh, sanded the finish. And uh, then we went ahead and started uh, working on the wingtip. Got that glued in place uh, right there. And again, used the plane to get the heavy material off and sanded it to flush. 
made a nice uh, nice finish there. And now I'm just working on smoothing around that uh, leading edge a little bit more. Cleaned up my mess, of course. Got to keep that clean. Laid out the board again. And now I need to cut out that aileron. This was nerve-wracking because uh, when you mess up, that wing is just, it's trash. So I wanted to make sure I was not cutting through any of the ribs that I didn't need to. But luckily, they give you a pretty nice area there to cut through without really worrying about messing it up too much. So that's great. But I did keep breaking that one rib there on the uh, inboard. Uh, until you get that glued to the other wing, it's, uh, it's a trouble. So... Uh, sanding that all flush against the uh, trailing edge spars there um, because once you get that nice and flush that's when you're going to add that trailing edge um, uh, spar or trailing edge piece there and that's going to seal that whole section there a little bit get that nice and smooth and uh, adds that meat to bring the aileron back up to the right height same thing on the aileron you'll have the aileron leading edge spar uh, you got to put that uh, cap strip on that as well, and that's going to give you the meat to be able to um, put in the bevels uh, so that the ailerons are moved up and down on that. Um, so I also glued in some hardwood pieces. Uh, those are extra meat in there for the Robart hinges that I'm going to be using. Uh, did the same thing on the wing as well, so not a big deal there. Uh, wherever those point hinges are going to be glued in, that's where I'm going to be going. So I went ahead and sanded that all flush, nice and neat. Checked to make sure the aileron still fit. It did. I used some wood glue as a little bit of a filler in some of those gaps. Um, uh, must not have sanded it perfectly, but uh, went ahead and did that. Drilled out the hole for the control horn. Got that mounted in place. Sanded in the bevel. I did more of a rounded bevel this time instead of a 45-45. Uh, this wasn't enough meat there to do a good 45. So the rounded edges worked really good. Drilled out the holes uh, for the pin hinges. Got those all in. And trial fit. Found out I needed to go ahead and use my small file and open up those holes a little bit more so that the pivot point is in the right location for them. Got that all done. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, closeout on this video or on this portion of the video. So I hope that helped out a little bit, guys, um, explaining a little bit what was going on. Uh, but we'll go ahead and, and uh, close out this portion of the video. We'll start the left wing. And uh, like I said, I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see a little bit more detail about what we're doing with that left wing. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, guys. So uh, I'm going to be calling it a day uh, regarding building this today. Um, we got the wing... The right wing panel is now completed. Um, we have the aileron is uh, hinged, uh, ready to go. I'm not doing 3D with this airplane, so this is going to be more than enough uh, control uh, for regular IMAX style flying. Uh, I might uh, loosen these up a little bit more. They do have a little bit of a uh, little tightness there. Uh, but all in all, it's uh, pretty much done. Uh, I do have finishing sanding still to do, uh, but uh, looking pretty darn good. I got to clean this hole up for where the servo goes. I'm going to open this up just a little bit more so I have areas uh, to get to the screws. And then we'll clean up this, uh, the, the kind of a hack job that I did there. Uh, we'll clean that up and you won't even know that it looked like that before. We do have the, um, the aileron control horn opening already in and we'll probably end up doing the same thing in regards to trimming that so that way the linkage and all, everything comes out right at the control horn or at the uh, the hinge point there but we'll see how that all looks but uh, yeah so this wing is more or less done so tomorrow we'll clear off the bench again and we'll get ready to do this all over again um, it's uh, definitely time consuming doing both wings, but uh, um, once we get the other wing done, we can then get them joined. And then we're pretty much getting close to the home stretch, uh, which would be the finishing and making it look nice. Uh, the final sanding, the, um, we'll have to do some final sanding. Some areas may have to do some fiberglassing. Uh, and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do one of the other locations on the uh, fuselage here. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's 
It's gonna take a little bit of time. We'll get it all looking good and then we'll put some covering on this thing and uh, it'll look nice and ready to fly. So we're getting really close. Kind of see how this, how the linkage is going. Now I did move it from what the book said. Um, I, because my servo arms are so long, if I put it here where they wanted, it was not going to line up properly. So I wanted to make sure I had 90 degrees and that's why I moved it like this. <clears throat> and then there's the lock nut here. There we go. And then the control horn itself goes on here like so. These are really nice beefy control horns. Uh, I want to make sure I had nice strong control surfaces here. I didn't want anything to break. I didn't use any of the the stock uh, control linkage here because I wanted to make sure that I had good strong ones on here. So that goes like so. You can go ahead and see that there. I'm not sure if it's going to focus, but we'll take some pictures of some things here. Um, so that'll go there. That way when the servo is in here, it'll be a 90 degree from the servo arm right to the linkage. So that'll work out really nice. Nice big gap here. Uh, really wish I would have been a little bit less, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, one of the, some of the cover, and I could probably close that gap up a little bit by putting a 16th inch piece of balsa uh, to cap the end here. Um, so we'll, we'll see about that when we get to that stage. But there we go, the wing panel is completed. So that's one out of two guys. Fuselage is about ready. The wing is about ready. Tail feathers are all done. Uh, so getting close. Another wing panel. So maybe another uh, next week I got some other things going on so I won't be working on this a whole lot. Uh, but uh, so uh, we'll, we'll probably have to continue on this in the week after. I'm uh, going to be taking my son next week to uh, Monster Jam over in uh, El Paso. So uh, maybe I'll get some video and uh, bring that, uh, show you guys that uh, next week. So, but uh, other than that, that's done. We're ready to go. And uh, we've got a little bit more trimming pieces to go around the, where the servo mounts are. And, uh, but I'll wait on doing that until I get the other wing done. So uh, looking really good. I'm really happy with this. It's looking really beautiful. And let's see how it matches up to the wing. And uh, let's see here, get these batteries out of the way so I can slide the wing in there. So that'll slide in right there. So uh, meets up really good, fits the uh, wing saddle really nicely. It's gonna be a nice airplane, guys. I'm really looking forward to seeing this in the air uh, and uh, maybe practice Get back in and getting back into uh, iMac uh, competitions again. So I know this is a small airplane for most uh, iMac, but uh, you know what? I'm just doing basic. Uh, I'm not really in the, uh, uh, I haven't really moved up to sportsman or anything like that when I was flying before. So uh, it'll be a good, uh, good airplane to just get back into it again. So, all right. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, that's all I have for today. So keep building, keep flying, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. See ya.